What up, nomads? In this video, I'm talking toiletries and how to pack them. I'm gonna cover what to pack, how much to pack, advice on swapping liquids for powders and solids, what containers to use, and how to avoid common issues like spills. First, what to pack. Unlike clothes, I don't really have much advice on what cosmetics to pack for specific destinations. You know your skincare routine, you know how your skin reacts in different seasons, what it's sensitive to, and what kind of beauty looks make you feel good, so stick to what you like. The exceptions fall primarily into the pharmacy or first aid category like bug spray or sunscreen, afterbite, and maybe extra moisturizing cream and lip balm if you're visiting a cold and windy place. If you're flying for a long time, pack eye drops and moisturizer with you in the cabin, and hand sanitizer always. I'm sure hair enthusiasts would also tell you to pack special products for humid places too, and if that's you, please leave a comment below because I need some recommendations as well. So where I can help is giving you a few tricks on how to pack less and pack smarter. The first step is to think about your trip, what you'll need, and think critically about what you can leave at home. For example, are you traveling to a destination wedding? If getting glammed up is part of your trip, consider whether you want to do your own hair and makeup, pack the tools and the supplies that you normally need for that kind of get up, or if you'd rather book a spot at a place to have it done. I've done both and there are pros and cons to each. There can be extra stress of getting to your hair and makeup appointment and the added cost. Also the trust aspect of putting yourself and your look into the hands of a stranger. But on the flip side, you'll most likely look amazing and not have to pack a blow dryer, curling iron, and the hair serum, hairspray, primer, contouring kit, setting spray, etc., etc. And maybe you can get away with only bringing a pared down version of that necessary for the rest of your trip after the main event. If it's a business trip, depending on your particular workplace and responsibilities, you might feel like this is a time you want your hair to be tamed for a big meeting or presentation. If this isn't a trip with a special occasion or a specific need, then you have a bit more freedom to simplify your routine or stick to what you consider an everyday look. In my video on how to pack for 36 hours, I recommended bringing lots of samples, which I still stand by. However, one warning is that samples often mean these are products that you don't normally use. If your skin is reactive, a trip might not be the time to try something wildly different from your normal products, like ones with extra strength active ingredients or meant for a slightly different skin type. You're evaluating your beauty routine. What are some helpful questions you can ask yourself to minimize your packing list? Questions I ask myself are, how long is my trip? For a short trip, I bring minis and samples. For a medium trip, maybe I bring my cosmetics transferred into a small travel container or the mini size of something that I know is just enough for this trip. And for long trips, like two, three months, with a checked bag, I might bring the full size item or even buy it at my destination. Will I have access to things there? For a short trip at a nice hotel, I'll totally use their soap, shampoo, and conditioner. In some cases, they might even be nicer than mine. If I have to streamline my beauty routines, then what's a non-negotiable? I've seen curly hair routines that use six products or more, but maybe there is one holy grail in there that alone can do like 40% of the job. What two-in-one products can I use to replace more complex routines? Now, I'm not talking about sacrificing yourself to harsh eight-in-one products, but little things like a leave-in conditioner or a cheek and lip tint, an eyeshadow that can also be used to fill in your brows, or a hair oil that's also a good body oil. Another question I ask myself is, what beauty services can I get done before my trip that will allow me to pack less? I'm not very good at nails and I don't love packing nail polish, but I also hate having chipped nails, so I get my nails done before a trip. I also recently have gotten into lash lifts and tints and have been taking better care of my skin so I don't need as much makeup. Am I checking a bag or not? If you're not, you'll have to consider the TSA 311 rule, 
which means using bottles of three ounces or 100 milliliters max of liquids and gels. And these need to fit in a bag that is one quart size. If I am limited in my liquids, what items can I swap out for solids or powders? More on that in a little bit. Next, dock kits. Consider what toiletry bag or dock kit you're gonna pack all this stuff in. Some airport security are really strict about pulling out your liquids and gels and having them in a clear bag on the conveyor belt, while other airports don't really care at all. I've experienced the whole spectrum and typically my go-to bags are clear, but more substantial than a Ziploc bag. That being said, a Ziploc bag is a perfectly fine bag to use. You may also wanna take a few of the baggies they provide at the airport and stash them for future trips so you can be super prepared for the strictest TSA agents. Amounts. Don't waste precious space by using bigger bottles than what you need. If you have products like shampoo that you use a lot of, save the 100 milliliter bottles for those and put your pimple cream or your spot treatments in these tiny jars. Now the question of buying the minis versus filling up a container with the full size is always a great question. I've packed almost every kind of container on my trips before and I can say that they all have merit in different situations and for different products. I've done the one and done sample, the free sample with purchase, the official mini size, um, I've transferred products into uh, bottles of empties and just like relabeled them. I've also tried the GoTube silicon style, the Muji containers, and I was recently gifted the Cadence containers and purchased the Reese uh, air pump to give this a try on my next trip. So obviously tiny vials and jars are perfect for small trips, but it's also more economical to refill these with a large size than it is to keep buying the official minis. That being said, I do like the official travel size bottles when I'm not sure of the best material for a specific product. So some products need dark vials to protect the integrity of the active ingredients. Some need hard plastic and oil needs to be in like a glass jar so it doesn't leak. And if you watched my YouTube short on silicon bottles, you know that um, you shouldn't put products in here that contain silicon because spoiler alert, it causes a chemical reaction and a little bit of an explosion. So make sure that you're picking the right material for the chemistry of the product. And if you're not sure, sticking to the original packaging is always the safest bet. Also, this is a no brainer, but I'll mention it anyway. Um, if it's a liquid that requires a spray, put it in a spray bottle. Um, if it's a foam, you can't just put it in a spray bottle and expect the same results. So what to do with perfume? Well, if it's a bottle that's like 30 milliliters, you can pack it with you in a carry-on, but I find that that does use up a lot of space. So my preference is to like buy the travel size if it's a product that you love, or purchase an atomizer from Amazon that you fill from the bottom using your large uh, perfume bottle. So these are quite convenient, but you can't really reuse them. Once you put um, one type of perfume in it, you have to just keep refilling it with that type of perfume. I also want to touch upon swapping out liquids for solids and powders. There are lots of reasons to do this. The first one being that with precious limited space for liquids when following the carry on 311 rule, You'll want to save that room for the liquids high on your must have list. If you have a prescription ointment or prescription antiperspirant that comes in liquid form, then you might be happy to swap out your perfume bottle for a solid perfume or a powder perfume if that's the sacrifice you must make. Plus, nowadays, there's almost a solid or powder alternative to every product. Toothpaste, we've got tablets. As I mentioned, there's also solid and powder perfume, solid skincare products, powder products you mix with water, solid and powder sunscreen, solid shampoo and conditioner, solid foundation, solid body butter, and these are all great alternatives to liquids. The second reason to pick solid products is they don't spill. Third, they usually have much bigger volume, meaning one solid shampoo bar is like 80 washes versus like three washes in a smaller size bottle. And then lastly, they also often come in recyclable packaging, so there's also less waste. Okay, now how do you make sure your bag stays super clean? 
Well, putting your toiletries in the correct type of container is the first step, making sure that container is in good shape. Next, if you wanna add another layer of protection, sometimes you can take some saran wrap and put saran wrap over an opening like this and then close the bottle on top of the saran wrap. Um, I like to keep things closed, like having makeup brushes that have their own lids to keep my makeup bag clean. And as an extra precaution, you can put all your liquids in a Ziploc bag and close that tight. I do like to use these kinds of clear bags because I find them easy to clean and to keep tidy. That was it. That's my video with almost all of my cosmetic packing tips. If you have specific questions, leave them in the comments below. Once again, thanks for watching. Happy travels and see you in the next video. Thanks for watching this video until the end. For more content like this, make sure you subscribe to the capsule suitcase and turn on notifications so you get all the fresh content as soon as it comes out. Thanks for supporting this channel. Happy travels.